So to help me with that, I'm going to bring on Bob Dixon. Bob is a great contest caller as well as one of the finest hunters I've ever been with. Let's go see Bob now. Well, welcome, Mr. Dixon. Hello, Wilbur. Nice to have you. Good to be back. <laughs> All right. Bob, on, uh, before we uh, go in more, let's show them how we cut or how you and Will cut. His, his form of exciting calling, it's, it's like something I've never heard, but it drives turkeys bananas. So. Everybody does a little different, and, and, and that every hen sounds a little different, so it's work. I'm going to use a true double two here. It's, I've had tremendous success. Cut, no matter of fact, we killed a turkey down Union Springs this spring, this spring with my good friend David Smith that were hanging out in a pecan orchard. They'd get out there in the middle of the day and strut, and everybody in the county had food with them. Said they couldn't be killed, and by watching those turkeys, when the hen left them, we laid there and watched them for probably an hour and a half, two hours before we ever called to them the first time. We hit them with the excited cutting, mm -hmm. and they folded up and camped there and killed them. This is pretty much what we did. They can't stand it sometimes. They cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cut on the uh I'm gonna cut on the box and let uh Bob cut on the super slate. This is the uh Primo's hen box and I, I use the uh the paddle part to hold and the, the box part to strike with and it's just excited clucking the same thing. Dynamite. That sounds in the woods just as much like a real hen as anything else. Why don't you give him a shot on the slate there? Ooh, that sounds good. Now, what, what slate is that you're using there, Bob? That is a true slate, and it is a super little call. Thin piece of slate on top, which is what gives it such a good tone, and then your acrylic striker. Well, this one, uh, this one was, uh, you and Jimmy redesigned this one for me. I, the first time I used this call and heard it, because that's about all I do is cut, I said, this call ought to have a skull and crossbones on it. Y'all, this year, a lot of times, it'd, it'd, be, it'd be rough on me. By 10 o'clock, I had to take a nap, and I'd lay down and take a nap. And he'd get on that call, and he'd never stop calling. The only time I had a chance to use a friction call is when I didn't have the camera on. We were just sitting there waiting for something to happen. And this little call right here to me cuts better than anything. I'm going to tell you what, when I'd get off in the woods from you two, three hundred yards, and off in the woods doing something and coming, and you doing that, that thing sounds Sounds un like a Woo. live turkey. Man, it sounds unreal. Y'all talked about how how great it is, and I know because I cut all the time, I know a lot of people do, but give us a couple examples of when, when you wouldn't do it. You know, say uh, uh, a, a, a long, uh, say you got a gobbler in a field at noon, and he's got three or four hens with him, and he's in the middle of that field, and you walked up to the edge, would you, would you cut at him then? I, personally, I'd probably wait, try to catch him away from his hens. You mm -hmm. know, every, every day at some point, those hens are going to slip off from that gobbler as it gets later in the season because they're going to sit on the nest. And when the reason they slip off from him is so that they he won't find the nest. And when he's been out there by himself for a good little while and he's a little bit lonesome, and it's a big tactic that I use in afternoon hunting. I know y'all love to do that in the morning. I've used as much as afternoon, probably or more than I do in the morning, for a locating type call in the afternoon. Because I'll get out there and he's been his hands have been away from him. I'll get out there and broadcast, and I'll do that cutting, excited cutting, just like a hen will do when she comes off the nest. And that gobbler's been out there by himself for several hours. And, buddy, the minute you do it, a lot of times he'll pop it right on top of it, and you're in for a hunt in the afternoon. It's a super effective way to kill turkeys in the evening. It works good in the mornings, and I, I haven't found a whole lot of situations where it didn't work. And there's times turkeys won't come in, but uh, it was, uh, it's just a, it's a dynamite call. And uh, I think any kind of excited calling is, is, is you know, that's what, that's what brings the turkeys in to me. A lot of times you can bring them in clucking. But one of the neat things about having a feel, like you just talked about, is being able to watch them and see what their reaction is. Right. And one of the things that, that I like to do, is, if I can, is to stand up but back up maybe 100 yards in the woods and do some real aggressive calling and see what happens. A lot of times one of the hens will get extremely hacked off, and she will come and the rest of them will follow. So just trying it is neat, and just being able to do it. 
be able to see what their reaction is. Something else that I've had luck with, Ronnie, in the morning is it, a lot of times if you're doing that old hen, she'll really get aggravated if she's with the gobbler. That gobbler's got hens with him, and she'll start cutting right back. Well, the minute she does that, I start cutting her. Mm -hmm. While she's yelping or while she's cutting, I jump right on top of her, and she will not be able to stand that. She's going to come on in there because she's probably the boss hen in that area, and that old gobbler's going to be strutting right along behind her. Well, how would you uh, tell somebody if they, uh, they got a gobbler right there and he's gobbling good, say it's the first thing in the morning, how could you tell them when not to cut? If you make your first call and it's a cut of the turkey, if he doesn't respond real hard, are you going you gonna to shut down and, and go to go in cut mode like Will says? Sometimes you have to do that. You know? I, I, to, to me, that just depends. Uh, I'm going to get there, I'm going to set up on him and, and wait till he flies down. But I want him to respond aggressively to me. If he doesn't, if I can't hear him drumming or gobbling, I might need to change something and wait and see what's happening. Because a lot of times, uh, some of these turkeys have been run off and they're used to the gobbler being with the hens. And if a hen's calling him like that, he knows if he comes over, he's going to get his behind beat. So there's that part of turkey hunting you have to realize. That, that, that thing is, that could be going on. It's not that they aren't responding to the cutting or they're not responding to your calling or you're not any good. There's something else. You're, you're doing so good, you're sounding like the hen that the last time he responded to, the gobbler came over and ran him off, and he doesn't want that to happen. Every situation's a little different. If I sit up on turkey in the morning, I get over there, and I finally get sit down, I've made my tree call, and the turkey's gobbling, and I'm sit there, I'm going to usually wait personally for him to get on the ground, but if another hen all of a sudden comes into the picture, she starts tree calling right in there close, or you hear another hen yelping off down in the woods, but it's time to pour the coal to him because you want to get his attention right away before he gets to that other hen. We made that mistake in West Point this past sure season. Did. We had a goblin turkey going nuts. and Didn't call to him. And didn't did call it. to him, and right before he flew down, a hen cut loose, and he went straight that way. And, and you, you never know what's going to happen. We were hunting on a place that, that gets an awful lot of pressure, and, and a lot of times when I'm hunting an area, a public area that gets a lot of pressure, I don't call the turkeys quite as much because I think a lot of people, you know, have been out there and they yep and yep and yep. But that was one situation where it would have sure paid off if we'd have let him have the rod and his shuffle. A, a, a perfect example of when to use it is when a turkey is gobbling back. I mean, I don't just, I don't just, hey, he gobbled back. That's great. I've got his attention. I'll just yelp at him now. I don't do that. If you look at the hunt that we were on with Shirley Grenoble, I mean, the turkey would gobble and I would blast him. And he would gobble three, four times before I'd get through calling, inside my calling. And then I'd wait till he'd shut up. I'd call again. I'd make him answer me. I kept him going. It's like, it's like a fish. You normally give him any slack. If he does, he'd throw that lure. Absolutely. Whatever, I guess whatever works is the right way. And you, you never know what to do. The main thing I want to tell people is don't be afraid to try it. Well, I'm not. You know what? Coming up next, we got, uh, we've got we had six hunts that just were dynamite. We've got some, some hunts coming up now that me and you are going to talk about. They tell some truth that never gets told. This, this, this next stuff coming up is the real truth. <laughs> the real spring truth. Spring turkey hunt. The truth you don't know, nobody ever admit. Right. We're going to show it. Let's look at it. All right.